Yo, 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 we back at it again with another bang. Today's video is very highly requested. Everybody have been putting this in the comments for damn near every video I've been posting. So, gotta get the fans what they want. Today's video will be on the legendary Zero the Crooked. But at this time, he was just going by Zero. We're gonna be talking about his second studio album, Zero vs. The World. We're gonna be getting into the production behind it. The features, the artwork, meaning behind some of the tracks. So without further ado, don't forget to get your wine, your drinks, your snacks, your smoke. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that button to get notified every time I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get into this. Just a little backstory. By this time, Zero already had did his first studio album, Look What You Did To Me, legendary album but it didn't go as planned. It was released on a label, Fisher Boy Entertainment. States from Zero in pretty much every interview he says throughout all the albums that he's done, this is one of his most favorite and hard worked albums that he's done in his career. He was doing a few shows here and there, but he was really strong strongly pushing for the gorilla mob thing at this point he's the one who came up with the whole gorilla mob idea and the name so why not go push further into it he was battling between personal life and he was trying to get figure out what was going on with this music even though he was going through all this music seems to be the thing that let him relieve all of his stress and so a lot of that was released on this Zero vs. The World album. Some time had passed, Zero and Gorilla Mob, they had released their first album, Rise, which that's a legendary album also, under Reservation Music Group. And some events had transpired, you know, by the time he already had met DJ Screw, and they had made a bond, I'm just hanging out with different people, and everybody knowing that Zero can rap, especially Screw. Screw was Zero's biggest fan. And so it pretty much didn't matter if he hit top charts or hit billboards. Zero would often have doubts about, you know, maybe niggas ain't gonna like my music because I'm doing a whole different style technique than what, you know, every nigga doing around this time. Zero stated that Screw would always tell them, nigga, do you. If don't nobody else bang your shit, I'm gonna bang your shit. If don't nobody else support you, I'ma support you. And Zero took that and held it dear to him. That's why you hear so many Zero tracks from Look What You Did To Me on a lot of screw tapes. Zero linked up with Din Din somehow and they started work, working and doing business together. As you knew, Young was working on his throw Young Player album. Zero was on that, the June 27 freestyle. Besides being on Straight Profit, Zero was just getting his feet wet in everybody's projects. He was in PSK 13's album. He was on Icy Hot album. He was on G Rap's album. Zero was just getting his feet wet in everybody's project that he could, that he knew. Also, you can't forget that he was on the OG Matt Grace's album. He had worked some out with Den and they started working on zero versus the world now according to din din zero had this work ethic that nobody that he had worked with or was around that time had a work ethic that zero had while everybody else was out partying and doing what they do zero was in the studio cutting records and when it came to production you know you had to have some of the baddest producers that was hype he had Dirty, he had the legendary Rakesh Jacobs, he had OG Solo, Sean Henderson, TJ Music, and of course, Zero was also producing his tracks as well. Me, myself, I'm finna get into just some highlight tracks that I wanna speak about that's on this album. The first one I wanna talk about is Niggas From The Hood. Man, this song is one of my favorite tracks because not only because it's Zero's track but the whole rhythmic and the rhythm with the track it featured Big Mo and Zero stated in Big Mo's documentary 
some years back that when they were in the studio recording this album, they chemistry was just there. Like he's singing, Big Mo coming back with the background vocals, backing him up. It was just magical. And people really felt it and, and they loved it. And of course, Zero had been new Big Mo and was friends with him from being at Screw's house and building that relationship. When you listen to the track, you can hear that Zero and Big Mo, they're singing this track with everything they got in them. No one was lacking any, any keys. Everything was on beat. This is when music was music, of course. The track was produced by Sean Solo. And when they were in the studio making this track, man, it was just off the wall. Solo had did this melody, man, and it just fit perfectly. Of course, it was like a little, not, not, not like a sample, but a piece that I guess Zero had spoken to Big Mo was like, okay, I want you to sing this at the end. Or maybe they came up with it collectively. At the end when Big Mo is singing, keep watching me. That's a resemblance of the Gorilla Mob track, Keep Watching Me. In years to come, Zero would redo this track multiple times. He redid the track on his third album, Zero self-titled on KMJ Records, but he renamed it Still in the Hood. Then, some years later, after he had signed to rap a lot, he redid it and named it Too Many Niggas, spelled differently with a whole different melody. On the album, The Life of Joseph, W. McVeigh in 2004. The song is very legendary and Zero states in uh, many interviews that all of his songs are unique and get played differently and get different reactions when he performs them at concerts. But he says when Niggas from the Hood comes on, it changes the whole vibe of the club and everybody starts like, Oh, there it go, there it go. And the whole crowd sings lyric for lyric, bar for bar. And side note, pretty much all of the remakes from Nigga in the Hood is produced by Solo. In years to come, Zero and Solo would develop a very strong bonding relationship within the music. They have made timeless hits together with Zero telling Solo, hey, I want this, I want this type of sound, but I also want this, you know, don't put that in there, and we can lay that. Basically, directing Solo, be like, tell me what you need, and I got you. But, on to the next track. The next track I want to talk about is Hustling Is All I Can Do, featuring Late Grade 3-2 and the OG Point Blank. This song, that up-tempo melody with zero singing the hook and those high symphony strings in the back being backed up with two verses separately from three two and point blank it just made the track phenomenal the main summary of the track is basically saying i'm still trying to get out the hood and i'm trying to do everything that's possible and try to do the best that i can to try to survive even though I'm on the right path trying to do what I can, the laws and killers is getting me out track and interrupting this positive stuff I got going on. And sometimes I feel like I'm finna go back to jail. And that's pretty much what this whole album is based on. Zero's putting his pain on lovely beats with lovely features. Zero has told many stories throughout all of his albums. But this album in particular has those heartfelt melodies that make you feel his stories. The next track I want to talk about is Swang on Foes featuring Big Mo and the OG Cliche. Now, this song is more mellow, slow paced tempo and laid back. On this track, Zero is basically doing a little bit of both he's singing then he's rapping 
throughout this time and point, really nobody was really singing and rapping at the same time, but but previously was Fat Pat, and that was back in 98. Zero was the rapping feature, and Big Mo was the background vocalist. He was just doing him and just humming in the background and sung the first part of the song along with Zero. The main point of this track was I'm feeling good, I'm swinging on foes, fresh cut, I'm out here doing my thing, but if niggas test me, I will show you what this heat be like. The song sample Regina Bell's Baby Come To Me. And that's for cliche, man, she got on this track and she ripped it apart with no questions asked. The next track I want to talk about is Looking Good, featuring the legendary Papa Root. Now, this track is more high up tempo and it has more of a feel good vibe to it. Zero and Papa Root did their thing when they made this track. There are many references on this looking good song that Zero will later use in several songs. The hook will later be twisted and used in his smash hit Top Notch from his crack album. The main point of this song was basically saying, we're going to chill out with all that plex for the day. I'm fresh, I'm clean cut with my nigga Papa Roo. We just blinged out. But we is finna shine and put it in your face. Zero and Papa Roo, they had did somewhat of a music video, somewhat, that was shot a couple of months or maybe you know, like a small time after they did this song but unfortunately that footage will not be shown in this video because the footage owner Ariel will not allow anyone to share or incorporate any footage of his in any videos kinda sucks right but you know it is what it is Papa Root also put this track on his album excuse me but to a different me melody. Me personally, I choose the zero version over the excuse me version, but different fans like, you know, Papa Roo's version better. Y'all put down in the comment section below which one y'all like better. The next track I wanna talk about is Third Coast. Now, the melody on this is real different. When niggas was hearing it and playing it in their car, they were like, ooh, man. This is, this tone is just different from any nigga what they doing. To me, the song gives off like a tropical Hawaiian, but like smooth type of vibe to it with those flutes in the background. And it sampled White Horse from Laid Back. It featured Din Din and the late great Meg Grace. The next track I wanna talk about is one thug this is personally my favorite out of all of them in my opinion i think that this song in particular is very overlooked and very underrated if you ask me the context of the track and the sample and the melody is so rare zeros coming in with that legendary hook the one thug one thug which is sampled of infamous Houdini track One Love and so another thing I want to incorporate is that Zero knew how to flip these old school tracks and flip these samples and make it his own because a lot of people they would just you know pay somebody for the sample and just use the sample how it is and not put the twist to it Zero on the other hand he did a whole 360 he would use it, but he would twist it around and put his own words to it. Like in the Houdini One Love, they say, you're lucky if you have just one love. Zero says, cause one slug, one slug, you know it only takes just one. Real genius, by the way. Like he had take some smooth Ozzy Brothers type of sample and make it into something gangster. Another track I want to talk about is Gonna Get Easier. And Zero comes on and he's 
going in and going fed. Another thing that I want to point out in this song is that Zero addresses the whole rumor about him trying to sound like Tupac. He says, a lot of people say I'm trying to sound like Tupac, but I can't help it if I sound the same, basically. Zero also, it was one of these songs where Zero took a legendary song and twisted a chorus into his own flavor. He sampled Ooh Child by the Five Stair Steps. Then another track called Screwed Up featuring Grace. Somewhere in this track, if you pay attention to the chorus or, you know, just little bits and pieces, if you're a really music fan, you'll hear In Vogue, Hold On. And now something else I want to point out is that not only is this song great, but it became the theme song or, you know, not 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 like the theme song, but like the intro to the Soldiers United for the Cash DVD. It was just slow down. And so when it comes on, Zero says, screwed up, click killer. These niggas don't want none. If you look at some old Soldiers Unite for the Cash videos, if they're still up on YouTube, because most of them have been taken down, you can hear what I'm talking about. It was also put on the OG Shunny Poo's compilation album, Third Coast Finest, and which I'll do a video on that compilation album soon. A song I want to point on in particularly is Still My Life. This song is one of those songs I was telling y'all about earlier in the video where Zero will make these heartfelt songs with these heartfelt melodies. He's basically pouring his heart out on this track and giving everybody a taste of his pain and letting them know a little bit in the inside of his world and what's going on with it. The main idea of the song was basically like I'm trying to survive and be the best that I can even though trials and tribulations are coming my way I just got to fight them the best way I know how it was also sampled his own song called Life Stories from his first album Look What You Did To Me another track I want to talk about is Steady Ball featuring the late great Big Hawk now this song is so legendary the rhythmic, the the sample that Zero and them emulated was spot on. This is one of those tracks where Zero was going in with that fast rapping, flipping the tongue flows. And this track, Hawk is more like laid back, but still giving you that fire. The song sampled the legendary group Shalimar and the song A Night to Remember. Where Zero and them emulated this Shalomar sample was throughout the chorus. Shalomar says, get ready tonight, gonna make this a night to remember. But Zero flips it and turns it into steady balling. Tonight, we're gonna ride while we sipping and smoking. Like Zero just thought of some brilliant stuff, man. I really wish that him and Hawk could have did a video to this track, you know, after it first dropped, because Hawk was blowing up majorly with his under Hawk's wings by this time. And it would have, you know, made a good look and it would have set the tone. This was the first album of Zeros that hit Billboard charts. It was featured in a Murder Dog magazine, which I couldn't find. I tried my best to find that Murder Dog magazine. Some years ago, I had seen it and it showed the Zero vs. The World ad and it gave a little brief summary about the album but unfortunately I couldn't find it maybe some of y'all music heads in the comment section below y'all comment if y'all got that specific Murder Dog magazine I know it's one of the OG's Third Coast Classics he pretty much collected everything from starting from when Houston Rap first started getting popular until now y'all go check his page out when asked zero how he felt being on the billboard charts he had this to say well i know how it be man i was like a nigga out the hood on the chart no shit it's like see man you know <laughs> i'm almost there i wouldn't you know i, I wouldn't know all that man i'm doing this shit though you know I'm no shit i gotta respect it all right then i knew motherfuckers was feeling me then so yeah I, you know i ain't tripping i just keep doing what i'm doing i can't 
feels, dog. Another thing I want to peek at is this artwork. Zero's artwork for this album is so phenomenal. Of course, you know this is going going into the later years of Pen and Pixel when they almost had to close down. Zero was, was fortunate enough to get a cover from them and this was his first one. The Zero vs. The World artwork is out of this world. They captured his lyrics to a T and they put his lyrics on a cover. They have like a lot of stock footage, people in different outfits on the cover. They made it look like a wrestling match behind Zero. Of course, if you look at the cover, a lot of stuff that Zero has on was not on him originally. Pen and Pixel was so unique and so notorious for making a person go from normal looking to a superstar. Of course, Zero had all the jewelry and stuff, and that was, you know, that was authentic. But the straight profit gloves on his arm and the straight profit built around his waist, all that was photoshopped and pen and pixel did their thing. I'm pretty sure that this was almost hundreds of layers to do this. If you look at the font text, they got like this little watery type of font and an icy glare at the bottom. If you look at the back, you see Zero land on his name. It's encrusted and embedded with diamonds, bling all around it. I'm pretty sure that Zero was laying down on a ladder or something or on a couch when they shot this. And yeah, this album is considered a huge classic in my book. A lot of people will be hating and, you know, like the down talk zero, but you can't deny he's a whole legendary icon out here. And this album will remain a classic. And so, yeah, I hope y'all liked this video as much as I did. I got more bangers coming and I'm trying to get all y'all requests out as fast and quickly as possible. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on that bell to get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks for everybody who support me and giving me props in the comments. I also like to thank God because without him and y'all supporting me, this wouldn't be happening. But your boy gonna always be here. It's gonna always have that good quality content that's gonna bring your eyes and ears to the rear. And I'm out this joint. Much love to the OG, legendary Mo City Dunn.